The Tri-Valley University in Pleasanton, a major suburb in the San Francisco Bay Area, has been charged by federal investigating authorities with being part of an effort to defraud, misuse visa permits, and indulge in money laundering schemes and other crimes. I'm here at the Shah Parali Law Group and we're going to talk to Shah Parali and ask him about how these students are being impacted and what is the gravity of the situation here in the Bay Area. So please welcome Shah Parali. Shah, can you tell me about the situation that's happening with these students? As you know, it's a sad situation that we are facing right now because uh, ICE, a Department of Homeland Security, raided the, the California-based uh, Tri-Valley University. And by doing that, they pretty much cancel most of the people, um, not their student visa, but the service which is attached, which attaches to the student visa. And it's either cancel or on hold. They are not really giving us a lot of information. The problem is that without that service, um, uh, releasing those service, they will not be able to transfer to another university even they want to. So we have been getting uh, probably around 200 calls. And as you know, I even did a radio show on it where we had people calling live telling us about their, their situation. It's very sad because in all this situation, we believe from our law firm point of view that our clients are victims of, a, of an unfortunate um, happening. And, but sometimes they are being portrayed as criminals, which they are not. They came here, they paid the school with their hard-earned money, and I think they deserve a right of representation and they deserve to be, to be helped. Many of our students, luckily, we, we will try to put them on other kinds of visas. And one visa we are looking into is, uh, but we are not sure we can put that as a U visa, which, which are for people who suffer from a crime. But um, so far, we have been able to advise them. The best advice we're giving to all of them, don't talk to the Department of Homeland Security or any kind of authorities without the presence of an attorney. The reason we are saying that is most of the time, the way the investigation goes, they will make the, the student or the clients make a statement. And, and oftentimes, those statements are used against those person. And the few people that made the statement from our experience uh, on this specific case, uh, they were placed in deportation or are going to be placed in deportation. So the big advice we're giving to everybody is don't talk to the immigration unless you have an attorney present. And that's your right under the US Constitution. And um, the other thing that we are seeing, uh, which we will we'll make a call to everybody, every Indian and everybody in society to basically stand by our side to help those students because they are innocent victims of a situation. And I will make a call also to the Indian government to step in and protect those students because m from my perspective, many of them are just, a, are just victims. And um, unfortunately, so far, we, we've been calling, uh, we've, been, we've been talking to the immigration uh, ICE and the service system, they have not given any answer. They told us by the end of this week they will post something as a guide how to help those students. But on our side, with our knowledge, we have tried our best to kind of find out ways to help them. And um, there, are, there are ways that I talked about earlier. Shah, what are the students going through at this time? Are they nervous? Are they scared, frightened? What are they going through? Well, it's really horrible. I had a, a person, a few persons coming here crying, some even fainting. And it was really, uh, it was really disturbing. Actually, I've taken those cases personally. And as you see, you're inv interviewing me so late. I've been here since 7 in the morning, and I'll probably be staying here till late. And I've been getting calls every pretty much 10 minutes in the office from people all around the United States. And they've been trying to help. And people have even volunteered to help. And um, it, is, it is something very, very disturbing for them. And they, they don't deserve it. Many of them don't deserve it at all. They, don't, they didn't get those visas to stay in the United States because many of them could have been on other kinds of visas. So it's not a matter of visa fraud like it's being portrayed uh, right now. Uh, the perspective we look at it is they are just victim of an unfortunate situation. And s unless, um, and in America, you know, you're innocent until proven guilty, as you know. And, and so far, we have, they have not proven guilty, anybody have been proven guilty. Shah, how many students, uh, how many South Asian students do you think are impacted by the situation? Well, from what I heard, we are talking between 3,000 to 4,000 uh, total students, out of which I'll say 95% are South Asian, and probably most of them from India and I think South India.
uh, South India, I'm not sure, but from what I heard, it's mostly South India. Uh, what is your advice to different students who are coming here and attending universities? Tri Valley University, if it happened here, it can happen anywhere else as well. So what is your advice that you've given to students? Well, first of all, the biggest advice is to make sure that the university you're going to is complying with all the rules. Unfortunately, it's very hard to tell, especially when the government themselves are kind of sanctioning them, allowing them to do that uh, somehow. And uh, But make sure that you do a check. Most of the big universities uh, that we have here are pretty much, they, they, are, they are doing everything by the book. And I will say most of the universities that are licensed by service are doing the right thing. But unfortunately, it seems like what this university has done is something which is still in a kind of, we don't know if it is a gray area of the law or something that will be in the future. They pretty much were serving the students on a virtual basis. And um, there are some provision under the law that they cannot do that. Having said that, um, it seems like the State Department should have done their homework before they even let them get that service um, license. Um, but the biggest advice, always make sure that you get the right information. Now you have the internet, a lot of good information out there. Check with the State Department. And please, uh, I know many people in India do it, don't use agents. Uh, uh, when I mean agents, I mean all those uh, agencies that just pretend, oh, I can get you hooked up in a school, pay that much money. And I know so many students come here and say, Shah, I paid 20 lakh, 50 lakh to get a student visas and then things like that. Those right there, there's a red flag. That means there's something fishy that they're doing. If you're getting, you want to go to school, try the genuine way, go to the State Department, go to the U.S. Consulate, and make sure you're getting the right information, and you can always contact a lawyer here who's licensed to practice law to help you. And um, at this point, I think it's the best advice is to make sure you're getting the right score. Shah, what is actually going on with the students? Are they being put in removal or deportation proceedings? Are they being jailed? What's going on? Actually, so far, the, the, all the cases we have gotten, I think only two of them have been placed in that, in that place. But in that situation, uh, I mean removal or deportation. Um, the reason it happened is because they went there. And actually, that's what the worst part of it is. They volunteered themselves. They went there. They started talking. They say, "Hey, I didn't do anything wrong." And then they started talking, and that was used against them. Mm -hmm. And people who were doing the right thing in their heart, saying, "I was being honest. I was just trying to tell the truth," and it ended up by putting me in deportation. That's why we are saying it's not a matter of being honest or telling the truth or lying. You have to be represented by counsel. Counsel means an attorney who is licensed to practice law. Because having an attorney present, it will make a difference. And that's the, the maxim of the United States. You have a right to an attorney. Anything you say can be used against you. Unfortunately, in immigration, you don't have a right to a free attorney, but you can afford an attorney, you should get one. And I will highly recommend everybody, I say it again and again, they should not go there alone or even talk to them alone. You don't have to be rude, but they can just tell them, please, I will talk to you when I have an attorney present. Thank you for your time, and we hope to get an update from you soon regarding the case. And I can see you've been working long hours uh, around about this issue. Oh, thank you, Kavita. Well, we have to do what we have to do to help those people. And I'm, I really appreciate the fact that the, the media is getting involved, and I make an important call here to tell everybody we need your help. We need all of you guys to talk about it and tell more and more people that most of the students are victims. They are not the, what is being portrayed by some other media. Uh, just people who are just committing fraud. Many of them, personally, I've talked to them. I don't see them committing any fraud. They were just victim of a situation. Most of the students that I have talked to do not want to be on camera. They fear deportation by ICE, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Attorney Shah Parali has just given us a summary of the situation here in the Bay Area. Students are frightened, and many of them have master's degrees, PhD degrees. They're very well educated, and they've come here for a good, honest education in the U.S. This is Kavita with Know Your Law, saying be good, be well, and remember, the law is on your side. We'll meet again next week for another segment with the Shah Parali Law Group. Until I see you again, this is Kavita for Satare TV.